morning guys just out for a run with plenty of walking in it this morning thought I'd explore part of the Chesterfield round walk um, which is also uh, along the same route as the Spire ultra marathon which I'm hoping to do one day probably next year as things stand as my knees still giving me some jip but here we are this is the nearest point from my home where the Chesterfield round walk route comes down this lane if you're doing it clockwise that is which people tend to do uh, you can see the sign for it up here and it carries on along this way so let's see where we end up so we cross over the railway bridge and then it's over the road down onto the path good eyes to spot the sign over on the other side of the road there There's little yellow stickers on the public footpath sign so we drop down this path next to the railway see the bridge we just came over there along here we we'll follow this for maybe half a mile until we get to the other end a bit muddy in places it's a bit nicer in summer so as we approach the end of this lane there's a sign on the post there just getting towards the junction at the end uh, fairly well signposted the Chesterfield round walk. See, there's one just on the both gate posts here telling us to veer off to the left. This one's a bit damaged, the sign's a few years old. And as you come through, telling us to go back this way. Oh, but then there's one telling us to go that way. Oh, no, I'm stuck now. <laughs> now it is signposted in both directions, but you'll find the clockwise ones, there are more of them. You get the occasional anti-clockwise sign, but as you saw at the starting point, there was only signs pointing one way, so uh, go clockwise if you think navigation may be an issue. But we're going to turn left here, ignore that trail. Up we go. There is a bit of a choice here, don't go up there, that just leads to the farmer's fields. If we were to turn off left we'd be heading to North Wing Field and off the round walk. So we don't want to do that, just carry on the middle route. And this should get us into Claycross. Should be able to see a nice view of North Wing Field. Lawrence's Church. We continue towards Claycross. As we approach the gate at the end of this lane, you can get something of a view of the railway tunnel with the big turrets. Takes the trains underneath Claycross. Bit hard to get a good view of it, actually, for safety reasons. It's fenced off. So there's a round walk sign as we pass through this gate telling us to carry on via left slightly. Lots of new houses being built in the area. You may have noticed I can hear the activity from the building site up there on the right. So as we approach the end of that lane I want to turn a sharp right. I don't think it's signposted very well. Morning. Uh, spot one sign over here, so you may have. Uh, there's one taking us anti clockwise there, but you may have accidentally carried on to the end of that lane if you weren't careful. So, this sharp right, there is a sign on here, but you'd need eyes in the side or back of your head to have spotted that one. Uh, worth knowing where you're going at this bit. going past the uh, park here and we follow it round to the left. This is the 
park entrance. Keep left on this path. We're going about halfway up, halfway up this path, and then we turn left through the new housing estate. So, at just over two kilometres from where we set off, we reach the peak of the hill at, along this path, and we need to be aware that we've got to turn left here. Stick with the trail. A bit muddy due to all the building works at the moment. Um, can't see a sign. No indication that the round walk goes left here, but this is where we need to turn. Uh, the house has been built there. We've got some fresh new ones over there. If you get hungry at this point, there's a McDonald's and the Six Holtz pub. And I think that's a Costa coffee, just over the back of this estate. I think I'll just carry on today. We need to just uh, stay on the top of this embankment and uh, follow it as it curves round to the right. So we follow it all the way around along the line of the houses and I'll show you where it goes after that. So as we reach the end of the row of houses, it's a road down there, we just need to follow this fence on the right. Uh, the A61's directly ahead of us and there's pedestrian access between all the fences and then just to get us to the road there. Uh, yeah, I think this has been a public footpath for a long time so they've kept it open and we've done the new buildings. It's a bit muddy today. But yeah, just follow this to the end until we meet the road there. When we do meet the road, we've got the sign here pointing both ways for the round walk. We want to turn right here towards Tupton. We only stay on this a very short while, maybe a hundred yards. There's a little fence on the other side of the road there. Apologies for the noise. On the other side of the road there's a stile that we need to get to. So you can see there is a sign on this lamppost telling us we need to cross over. Trying to get over there. <laughs> Wish me luck. I'll put the camera away. Made it. <laughs> so when you get here, we're back with the signs again. This sign posted to turn right on the way back. But we just need to follow this path through the middle of this field. You can just about make it out there. So as we leave that first field, there's a gate you can see directly ahead over there. I don't think we need to go through that gate. As we come through the wait, gate, rather, path straight ahead. Again, a bit soggy today. I'm sure Ooh, it's nicer in summer or when they do the official ramble round in May. But this little lane should take us to a road in. Uh, Tupton, I believe it is. Oh, I need to correct myself there, I can't think of the name of the place. I'll put it on screen. <laughs> so eventually, after a muddy walk, we reach the end of the lane. Let's see what the sign's telling us. Go left. Crossing the road because we need to turn right again shortly into the woods there, there's a path just on the right down here it takes you into the woods uh, far up to the wood I think it's called here we go, so we're turning right here, there's a sign on the gate post into far up to wood 
only about 50 yards from where we joined that road and then we just follow this all the way through to the road at the far end of the woods just stick to the widest path as we go through here there are a couple of alternate routes there's one that veers around the left hand side but you do end up at the same place but the central route's the, the one we're supposed to be following and the most direct so we approach the edge of the woods you should see the gate and the stile and a view of the road at the far end you may have accidentally come from that way <laughs> don't worry about it again from here I can see the yellow sign on the gatepost telling us to go straight ahead now we actually cross the road and there's a public footpath on the far side of the road there here we meet the road you can see the yellow sign on the other side Another nice woodland trail for us to go through. See the yellow sign tells us to go straight ahead, straight through the woods. Uh, this is where the spire altar, I believe, veers off from the Chesterfield Round Walk, only briefly. The Round Walk takes you straight through the woods there to the far end and then you go left to join the path. The altar, I believe, takes you around this way, around the edge of the same woods and you meet up at the same place there. So. I'm going to follow the round walk today because I did the spiral for one last time I was here. So we reached the edge of the woods here. Meet the edge of this farm. You can see it's signed in both directions on here. Obviously going left at this point. Um, when I talk about the spiral for veering off there, that's to the best of my knowledge having found a GPX file online. So if you're doing the race, please. Uh, check where you're going rather than relying on my directions but uh, yeah I did know that it did veer off at that point on the route I was looking at obviously the round walk is signed and hopefully on race day at least some of the ultra will be but we just get to the bottom of this hill and that meets up with where the other path comes from that would join from the left and then we're going right And this is the end of that path. Get to the stile here and meet Martin's Lane. If we were to go right, that gets us to the A61, Derby to Chesterfield Road. See it's signed in the other direction from there. So uh, we want to go left. There's a sign on the other side of the post pointing the right way. Through this gate here, and through some more nice woods. Just continuing to follow the main path here. There's a couple of branches off for different routes, but the main one's easy to follow. We're going all the way up the hill until we get to more of a complicated junction. So here we're approaching the junction. There is a turn on the left but we don't want to be going that way. Sometimes my sat nav on my phone gets a bit confused and it tells me I should have turned left there. We actually want to continue. There is a clear sign for the round walk route. Straight ahead down here. The left turn we want is just around the corner. Show you that when we get there. Here we are. We don't want to go into the woods. So if you get into the woods here, you've gone too far turning left, skirting around the edge of the woods. So this path is sometimes a bit difficult to see but all you're doing is keeping to the edge of this woods, following it uh, around on the edge of this field. It's 
so after a while the path takes us from the field back into the woods again. Again, signs on the way in. This is the fun bit, we get to drop down these steps over a little bridge and then up some steps on the far side. It's wet today, I recommend good shoes if you're doing this in the winter like I am. There we go, drop down these steps over the little bridge there, up the steps on the other side. I think I see some trouble ahead with the sign. Some damage occurred. See a round walk sign lying on the ground now. Less than ideal. But this is where we exit the woods, having crossed that little bridge. You can see the sign but the opposite direction. But again, we've got a woods on the right, path just next to it. We're going to follow that. And if you're running this bit, you're a better man than me. I have done here, but man, you're out of breath when you reach the top. Several fields here. You think you've got to the end of a field, and then another one that's equally steep, or if not more steep, <laughs> opens up after it until we get right to the top of the hill. So, as we reach the gate at the end of the first field, still got some climbing to do until we reach the top. We're heading all the way up there. Let's keep following the edge of the woods. field still climbing clear sign there I'm just following this path now even less chance of going wrong because we're fenced in and walled in at this point almost at the top see a sign on the post that is to go right into the woods again through there views ahead. Nice views behind. Worth the climb after all that. Okay, so I tend to keep left at this point. Sticking with the widest path all the way through. There is one that runs around the outside of the woods there near the field. A little offshoot there that I think is a dead end. This is the main central one. Okay, as luck would have it, uh, it looks like I picked the correct route there. And uh, we're just about to pop out of the woods onto the road there. I think it's Bowl Hill. Bowl Hill Road or Lane, whatever it's called. Uh, it's the most direct route through the woods that we've taken. So I'm um, 6.4 kilometres in as we turn left onto Bowl Hill. No footpath here, so we just need to carefully drop down this hill until we get the turn off on the right that we're looking for onto a bridleway. Okay, so as we crest a little hill there, public bridleway sign on the left has our yellow stickers on it, telling us to turn right, and also telling people coming the other way to go left here. So we don't want to go anywhere near Press Manor Fishing Lakes. We want to turn right up this bridleway here. That should take us past Manor Farm and onto our next part of the route. So, I'm going to leave it there for today, guys. That's the first part of the Spire Ultra or Chesterfield Round Walk routes. And uh, we've got about, let's see how far, almost seven kilometers from the starting point I picked in North Wingfield there. 
So I'm going to head back there today. My knee's had enough for one adventure. And we'll carry this on a bit later and see what the rest of the route looks like. Take care, thanks, bye.